Good morning, everyone. Um, I mean everyone in a general sense because in the church at the moment I've got a, only got a couple of people that I'm speaking to but I hope there are many like you who are watching this on YouTube. We've been going through Ephesians and this is I think number five out of six and our text is Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 20, and our theme is Don't Be a Christian Streaker. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, bless each of us as we listen to this message and uh, speak to us and encourage us as we walk with Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you seen a streaker at the football or the cricket? Um, uh, streakers, I guess, take off their clothes and run on to cricket grounds or whatever uh, because they are intoxicated with alcohol or because of a bet or because of peer group pressure, whatever. Um, if you run onto a cricket ground or wherever with no clothes on, you're rather vulnerable, aren't you? You've got no clothes to protect you from uh, the sun, from uh, the insects, from any jagged edges around the place. Uh, Paul's making a similar point in our Bible reading for today uh, in his letter to uh, the Christians in Ephesus. He's telling them to put on all the clothes of God. Well, he's using the picture of a Roman soldier, so he talks about putting on the armour of God. Um, listen to what Paul writes. He says, Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armour that God gives you so that you'll be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we're not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. Paul says we're fighting against Satan and the demonic. Hey, hold on a minute here. Satan and the demonic. Who believes in Satan these days? Well, I've got to tell you, I do. <laughs> and the reason I do, um, this, by the way, is a quote from C.S. Lewis, who says, uh, there are two equal er and opposite errors into which we can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. And I agree with that. Back to what I was saying. Why do I believe in uh, Satan and the demonic? And why can you? Uh, well, principally because Jesus believed in Satan and the demonic. And he spoke about the reality of Satan and the demonic again and again. Uh, for example, even at the start of his ministry when he was tempted, he spoke about fighting Satan. Um, we're told that Jesus expelled demons from people. For example, at the start of Mark's Gospel, Jesus says to uh, the evil spirits and a demon-possessed man, be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, who is this? Who is this man? who can do this. Jesus spoke in his parables about uh, Satan and the demonic. So I um, believe that Satan exists in the first place because Jesus did. And that's why I've got that highlighted in blue. Uh, the other reasons there are backup reasons, really. I've done a lot of reading over the years and reading in this area and all my reading the experiences of different people um, who've opened themselves to the occult and uh, what's happened in their lives as does my personal experience you know 
uh, when I was training to be a pastor, we had one year that was called our vicarage year, our practical year. And I was placed out at Dernancourt. And as part of that uh, vicarage, I did a counselling course at the Hillcrest Psychiatric Hospital. It doesn't exist anymore. But the thing that stays in my mind is I had to go and visit different people in different rooms. And it was amazing the number of people who said to me that they had um, been involved in occultish practices and even people who had um, occultish things in their room. If you want to read further about um, uh, Satan and the demonic, I recommend that book. I believe in Satan's Downfall by Michael Green. It's a great book about this whole area. What does Paul say? He says, put on all the armour, all the clothes that God gives you so that you'll be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we're not fighting against human beings, against flesh and blood, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities and cosmic powers of this dark age. Paul talks about the forces of Satan as being um, well, he talks about the wiles of Satan as being wily, as being wicked and being powerful. Um, and what Satan's aim for your life and my life? Well, firstly, to lead us away from God towards destruction. You know, uh, most of us know John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him as our saviour may not perish. Well, this is the word destruction, may not head to destruction. An 18th century preacher tells a story of what happened to him. He said he was walking along one day and he saw a man being followed by a whole heap of pigs. He thought, what's going on? So he decided to follow and find out what was going on. And he found out that they were headed to the slaughterhouse. And he said to the man, how did you get the pigs to follow you to the slaughterhouse? And he said, well, I had some beans in my hand and I kept dropping them as I walked along and they kept looking for them. That's the way Satan works. He tries to lead us little by little away from Jesus and faith in him towards destruction. He tries to lead us into sin and then to accuse us. If you look up Satan in the Bible, uh, he's described as the great accuser, the one who accuses God's brethren uh, day and night, um, Jesus' brethren day and night in this is in the book of Revelation, for example. How does uh, Satan accuse us? Well, when we give in to temptation and walk in a different direction than Jesus wants us to walk in, um, Satan says to us, Wayne, or says to me, Wayne, now you've done it. Uh, now you've gone too far. Uh, how can you expect God to forgive you now? Eat, drink and be merry and just enjoy yourself. That's what Satan tries to do uh, with people's lives. So Paul says, put on God's armour now, his clothes now. When, then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attack. And after fighting to the end, you will still hold your uh, uh, ground. So then Paul details the clothes that God gives us, the armour that God gives us, because he's working with the picture of a Roman soldier. He says, so stand ready with truth as a belt around your waist, with righteousness as your breastplate and as your shoes, the gospel of peace. At all times carry faith as a shield, for with it you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one and accept salvation as a helmet and the word of God as the sword that the Spirit gives. I said he's working with the picture of a Roman soldier. Paul would have been very familiar with Roman soldiers. They were the occupying army. 
of uh, uh, Israel and Judea and that surrounds and you can see the different parts of, uh, of their armour. And Paul uses this picture to talk about the things that are available for us as God's people. He begins with truth as a belt. Um, if your pants are falling down, you need a belt. I've got the opposite problem. Uh, my pants tend to get too tight. And I... <laughs> But, you know, a truth gives you, uh, your clothes stability and your undergarments stability. Uh, and that's what Paul's saying. And as God's children, we have the truth of Jesus as a, a belt. Um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. When you listen to Jesus, you find out the truth about God, that he loves us, and wants to forgive us about Jesus himself as our Saviour and Lord, about the world, about where we're headed, about ultimate realities. When you have, when you know Jesus, you have the truth as a belt around your waist. Next, uh, Paul goes on to talk about the armour that we have, solid breastplate of armour. That's the next item of equipment. Um, you know, the word righteousness um, is made up of the word righteous. Uh, we are righteous. If you're righteous, righteousness involves the fact that we are righteous. If we have the righteousness of God, we are righteous. The good news translates it as being put right with God. Uh, a couple of passages come to mind, for example, from Romans, where Paul says, for we conclude that a person is put right, justified, righteous with God only through faith, through faith in Jesus as our Saviour and not by doing things, not by what the law commands. And then he says, now that we have been put right, now that we have been justified, we have peace with God um, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Which brings us to the next item of uh, equipment, the sandals of peace. Uh, they're the, what Roman soldiers wore traditionally. Uh, Paul likens the gospel of peace to a soldier's sandal or half boot. Uh, the Roman soldiers wore these half boots. Uh, they were made of leather. They were heavily studded on the lower part of the leather. Uh, they were tied to the ankles and shins by more or less ornamental straps. And these boots equipped the soldiers for long marches, gave him a solid stance and prevented his foot from slipping. I think it's interesting Paul has the sandals of peace after righteousness as a breastplate because I think when you, as Paul says, um, uh, we have been, when we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God. Um, because we're justified and declared righteous through our faith in Jesus as our Saviour, we have a stability in our life that flows from uh, the shoes of peace. Uh, we can tread everywhere knowing that we're at peace with God because Jesus has suffered and died for all our sins. Uh, so that's what Paul is saying. Uh, the good news of peace with God through Jesus as our Saviour gives us, who are God's forgiven children, firmness and steadiness as we fight Satan like the books, uh, boots of a Roman soldier gave him firmness and steadiness as he fought his battles. This leads on to my favourite item, or favourite two items, uh, the shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God. You know, this sword that, uh, this uh, shield that they had was actually a lot bigger than that one depicted there. It was uh, a metre in uh, height and uh, three quarters of a metre wide. So you can imagine when a Roman soldier held this up, and people were uh, uh, sending arrows at him, he could put his great big shield up 
uh, which was made of uh, uh, solid material and held together by steel, um, by iron at the top and iron at the bottom. Uh, he could protect himself from the flaming arrows that are, that's arrows dipped in tar and set alight. Our faith in God and in his promises to be with us no matter what and to give us strength in times of temptation shields us from the flaming arrows of temptation that come our way. That doesn't mean, though, that some arrows don't get through. Um, you can imagine a soldier defending himself this way and someone shooting this way. Um, we give in, the reality is we give in to temptation from time to time, don't we? And, uh, but even when we give in to temptation, we have the breastplate of righteousness. We know we are right with God, we are forgiven by God, even for the crummy things that we do. Um, um, our faith in God is a shield. Actually, Paul goes on next to the helmet. Uh, the helmet is the helmet of our hope of salvation. That's what Paul writes in 5 Thessalonians. Put on our hope of salvation as a helmet. Uh, we can continue to fight um, whatever Satan throws at it, be a sickness, doubt, temptation, depression, the death of a loved one or whatever, because we know where we're headed. We have a certain hope for the future. We know where we're going, home to be with our God, God our Father and our Lord Jesus, and to be with all those who have gone before us and who will come after us. So Paul talks about our certain hope is salvation as being a helmet on our head. And then he gets to my next favourite, the sword. Uh, shield up, uh, sword. What's the sword that we can fight the temptations of Satan with? The word of God. The word of God. Uh, we can defend ourselves from Satan by quoting the word of God at him. That's what Jesus did. Remember Jesus in the wilderness uh, uh, being tempted? Uh, he... Uh, quoted God's word, actually from the book of Deuteronomy. Remember when uh, Satan tried to tempt him into turning stones into bread? What did Jesus say? The scripture says, man cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. And you know, we too can respond to the temptations that come our way uh, by quoting the word of God. At Satan. Uh, for example, if we're tempted to lust, I'm too old for that now, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, we can say to Satan with the words of Paul, flee immorality, run away from re uh, immorality. Uh, any other sin that a man commits does not affect his body, but a man who is guilty of sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or when we're tempted to greed, we can say with Jesus, watch out and guard yourself from every kind of greed because a person's true life is not made up of the things he owns, no matter how rich he may be. Or we can say to Satan, uh, Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and money. Uh, the way that we defend ourselves is through an open used Bible. It's often been said that a lovely new Bible up on your shelf is a broken sword because it's not being used. This is a Bible that's being used. The pers that person's Bible is uh, highlighted in different places so you can look back at his Bible and find the passages uh, that he or she uh, is looking for. I, as I've said to you before, I like underlining because highlighting goes through to the next page or can. So I underline in my Bible. The key thing is that you're able to find the word of God that you need for uh, the times of temptation that you're going through in life. It might be sickness. It might be the death of a loved one, whatever. And Paul says, 
Do everything in prayer. Pray at all times, asking for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all God's people and pray also for me. So I want to say to you this morning, don't be Christian streakers. Don't run run anywhere without the clothes that God gives you, the armour that he gives you. Um, You're not on your own as you fight the wiles of Satan, the temptations that you come come your way, not to follow Jesus, but to step out and to do your own thing. Uh, We have all these clothes, all this armour to protect us. And Paul says at all times, um, pray for God's help for yourself and for others. So there are six um, bits of the armour of God. That has seven, including prayer. But can you remember the six? Don't look up there. How many can you remember? Um, I start with truth as the belt. Then I go to faith and the word of God and righteousness as a breastplate. Um, I think of the shoes of peace, go to the bottom and then the top, the shoes of peace and the hope of salvation as our helmet. That's six. And then have prayer. Uh, May God bless you as you live your life following Jesus, loving and caring for the people around you and making a difference for your life. And may God give you the strength and help uh, when in times of doubt, in times of temptation, in times when you're tempted to go off in your own direction. And the peace which God gives and which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.